Object Class Explained is produced in partnership with SCP Declassified. If you want to take a look at any of their declassifications, check out the SCP Declassified subreddit. Links will be in the description below. While I always attempt to be thorough, this is not a comprehensive look at the covered subject matter. This is simply an abridged version to get you up to speed quickly. If you want to know more, always check out the content I'm discussing for yourself and draw your own conclusions. And of course, with regards to that content, this is a spoiler warning for SCP Containment Breach. If you want to experience the story of that game for yourself, go play it and come back later. Otherwise, enjoy the video. And I'm going to thank my patrons for September for making this and other videos possible. At the $1 tier, Zach Spuds, The Sherm, Rockney Matthias, and Lurker GG. At the $10 tier, Samuelism. Part 1. A Primer. SCP Containment Breach takes place at an unnamed site in a universe where the Chaos Insurgency is far more powerful than it is in the mainline continuity. And now that's a short version, but the game, which has been derided by the site's authors heavily for a lack of story, is actually much deeper than that. The story of the game is not just the story of a containment breach, I mean, that is a part of it, but the wider problems the Foundation faces are a backdrop for the events that transpire. The Foundation in the Containment Breach universe is under attack from without and within. The reason why all these SCPs have been moved to this unnamed site, for instance, is that most major containment sites are under constant attack from outside forces, likely related to the Chaos Insurgency, the Serpent's Hand, and maybe even the GOC. Now this place is a last bastion of sorts to maintain the secrecy and security of these objects. And of course it fails. It all starts with Dr. Maynard and Security Agent Skinner. They are Chaos Insurgency agents working inside the Foundation. Now, this is where things get a little bit thin plot-wise. To be fair, the Chaos Insurgency in this game is painted simply as an antagonistic force. They're trying to hurt and maybe bring down the Foundation, but that seems to be the only goal they have. Skinner and Maynard's plan is essentially just a culmination of that goal. They release SCP-106 and then give SCP-079 control over the site's computer systems during the confusion. Everything else that happens is a direct result of those actions. Part 2. Would you like to play a game? Uh, there seems to be a problem with the door control system. The door isn't responding to any of our attempts to close it, so please maintain direct eye contact with SCP-173 and... Let's talk a little bit about this unnamed site. We know it was used to house these items because the Foundation was under attack, but why is it so bad at doing that job? Well, initially this was a research facility with maybe a few safe SCPs under observation, and whole new wings of the site had to be built in quickly in order to facilitate the containment of these new SCPs, but with that rush came new problems. The site adheres to something called modular design, which is just a fancy way of justifying the labyrinthine layout of the procedural generation in the game. But in the backstory, Dr. Maynard came up with a modular site project, and of course, giving his true motives and loyalties as a Chaos Insurgency agent, the idea that that would turn out poorly is sort of a given. About the only thing the Foundation does at this site to prove it's not entirely incompetent is establish the mobile task force Nine-Tailed Fox, which show themselves to be fairly competent in the game, especially if they encounter SCP-173. But what you have here is a site that wasn't originally designed to hold dangerous SCPs with add-ons built by a double agent, the layout itself is a literal maze, oh, and a centralized computer control system, when one of the SCPs you're keeping there is a malevolent AI. And now the biggest problem for the site is that AI. Once Maynard gives it control of the site, it does pretty much exactly what you'd expect and tries to bring the whole thing down on the human inhabitants. Your most common interaction with SCP-079 is in a way you might not even notice, but when you close a door and you walk away but you hear a high-pitched whine and the door opens back up, that's SCP-079 trying to get you killed. And if you spend long enough looking at the monitors, you're also going to run into images from SCP-895's surveillance cameras which can kill you. And again, those are put there by SCP-079, and it's trying to kill you. <laughs> Basically, uh, just as a piece of advice, if you're playing the game, storyline-wise or not storyline-wise, don't trust the fucking computer in any way. 
If you disable the automatic door controls and go to the AI's chamber, it'll ask you to restore those door controls, and in exchange, it'll let you out through gate B. And this is of course a bad deal. It will continue to use those doors to try to kill you, and trying to go through gate B will always get you killed, regardless of what you try. And oh yeah, gate A is open no matter what you do. And incidentally, that is how you actually get out of the facility. Part 3. Escaping. Subject demonstrates extraordinary luck and complete mastery of even the most fatal of circumstances and an uncanny ability to predict even the most unpredictable of hazards, almost as if it had performed these impossible tasks several times before. Further testing is required to determine whether the subject should receive SCP classification. To be fair, this isn't a game guide and it's not meant to be completely comprehensive like I said at the top of the episode, but from a story perspective, I'm going to cover basically the five endings that you can possibly achieve here. Now one is the most common you're going to get, death. And there's a whole bunch of different ways for that to happen. You can grow ears on the inside of your lungs that suffocate you. You can get your neck stabbed at the very beginning of the game before you even get started. The old man can find you and drag you to his hell dimension and you can die there. The list really does go on and on and on. But after that though, there are really different ways to die once you make the exit. Gate B, as we mentioned before, will kill you no matter what. The site is equipped with a nuclear failsafe, and if you fail to deactivate the bomb, then it's going to be used in an attempt to prevent a full breach of SCP-682. In a failed attempt, that is, but still, the bomb goes off, and you, unlike 682, are not immune to nuclear detonations. But even if you do manage to deactivate the warhead, the MTF at that gate is in a firefight with 682, and they do not have time to peaceably take you into custody, so they shoot you and move on. But Gate A is where things get really interesting. If you recontain the old man, SCP-106, during gameplay, you absolutely cannot escape, which runs slightly counter to what you might expect. The MTF units at Gate A are alert and unengaged in that instance, so they simply spot you and they recapture you. But if 106 is still loose, they'll be fighting him when you get out, and that's when you can actually make a break for the exit. But once you get there, you're going to find a bunch of magically teleporting chaos insurgency agents who grab you and whisk you away. I like to imagine that's probably the canon ending of the game, but it's also the point where you get kind of a hint at the grander point and motivation of the chaos insurgency, yet that's it. We never really see that potential come to fruition. The Chaos Insurgency are there, at the gate, ready to greet you and save any D-Class who escape, but, but was that the whole point of the Death Grinder they created? They lost people here. Agent Skinner got out, but Maynard almost certainly was killed by the old man, so they already lost an inside man who had a lot of knowledge of what was going on inside the site, so it's not like you know anything he wouldn't have known. So after all that, I'm still left with the question of why bother? But still, even though the plot gets a little thin near the end, it's still a fun game. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and definitely click the notification bell as well so you'll be alerted when I upload new videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at DSumerian, to get immediate notifications when an upload goes out. And of course, if you'd like to join my growing group of patrons, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Links to all of this will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.